Well, I finally broke down and did it. I got a saw stop table saw for my shop and it's created a whole set of challenges. Well, let's call them opportunities. Let me explain why. In the past, in my former life, I had to move around a lot. That kind of sounds like I was running from the authorities or something. Actually, my company transferred me fairly frequently. And after a few years in a town, I would have to pack everything up, move cross country to another city, and start all over again. And that, of course, meant picking up and moving my shop as well. If you've ever made a long distance move, you probably know that large stationary power equipment is very expensive to move and it doesn't move well. It just doesn't always survive the move. So most of the time, I would sell the larger pieces of stationary power equipment locally before I moved and then replace them when I got to where I was going. And Financially, that wasn't too bad because if you buy nice equipment, it holds its resale value pretty well. And that, coupled with the savings from not having to move it, pretty much took care of paying for the new equipment. As a consequence, I've had a lot of different table saws. But when I moved here, I decided to get a portable contractor style table saw. And it was great. I could fold it up and roll it against the wall and get it out of the way when I needed space. And because it had a small footprint, I was able to set up my I-beam work supports on a kind of semi-permanent basis right in the middle of my shop and have a place to assemble and glue up projects. Now with the saw stop here, I've lost the luxury of having those I-beam work supports in the middle of the shop. Another thing on portable table saws is they typically have some type of mechanism or contraption on the back that you can pull out or swing up into place so that when you're cutting long boards, they're supported. Cabinet saws don't have that. Typically, people will build an outfeed table for their table saw to accomplish just that be able to run long boards without them pivoting off the end of the table saw. It's safer and much more convenient. I'd like to build an outfeed table that would double as an assembly and glue up table. So let's see what that might look like. So what exactly is an outfeed table? Well, it is just an extension of the top of the table saw so that longer boards have a place to slide as you go through and make the cut. It's safer and more convenient. And an outfeed table can be extremely simple. It is, after all, just a table. It can be a flat surface with four legs, or it could be attached at this side next to the saw and have two legs supporting it out here. Or it could be hinged so that it can drop down out of the way. There are hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of designs of outfeed tables, but there are a couple of things you need to remember and some considerations to take into account when designing your outfeed table. Of course you want your outfeed table to be the same height as the table saw, or just slightly below it, so that the boards can slide easily onto the outfeed table. You also are probably going to have to make some notches that line up with the miter gauge slots so that as you push your miter gauge or cross cut sled through a cut, there's a place for the bar to go without knocking into the table. And if like on the saw stop, your dust collection port is in the back or power cables or other things, you'll need to make allowances under your outfeed table for these items. Make sure you have clearance. Other than that, that's pretty much it for the design considerations on an outfeed table, but you know, I want more. If this really is the ultimate table saw, then I want to build the ultimate outfeed table. I'd like for it to have storage underneath. I don't want to waste that space under the outfeed table. And I'd like for it to be mobile so I can move it around in the shop. 
And of course, because I want to also use it as an assembly table, I need it to be absolutely level and absolutely dead flat. Now, I don't know about you, but when I think of dead flat, level, and sturdy, I think torsion box. But on the back of the Sawstop saw, there's this heavyweight steel angle here that limits the thickness of the top that can be pushed up flush to the back of the saw. In fact, I could only make the top just a little over two inches thick. And I just don't know how to effectively build a torsion box that's only two inches thick. So I've got to think that through in the design process. The other thing is, is I want my outfeed table to be mobile and that means wheels. Unfortunately, my floor, though pretty close, is not perfect. So I need some way to level the table when I push it up here to use it. The other thing is, is there's six or seven inches behind the blade on the table itself. So if I want to support an eight foot long board or 96 inch board, I need to have over half, 49 inches at least, on the table. So if I figured I had six or seven inches here, I need 42 or 43 inches for the outfeed table. But what if I saw a 10 foot board? Am I gonna have to start all over again? I wanna think that through as well. Let's go take a look at some of the drawings that I've done so far. All right, so here we go. I've got uh, what I call the front view. This is actually looking towards the saw. The saw would be behind the outfeed table. This will be drawers in here. So I've got pedestal legs with a face frame in here and I'll probably have four drawers in here. Got the torsion box top with a slight overhang on either end and uh, you'll notice there's a space between the torsion box top and the leg assembly. And the reason is, is because I'm going to try to put some kind of leveling mechanism in on the four corners. It's going to be a little bit of an experiment. We'll see how that goes. The side view will give you a good idea of how the construction is going to work. I'm going to have a 4x4 four four plywood pedestal a four by eight plywood pedestal, and a three quarter inch plywood panel set into dados and run between those two pedestals. The top, again, torsion box top on the top, and this is the saw side over here. Note the overhang here of one and seven eighths inches. This overhang is gonna clear that L angle iron on the back of the saw stop and allow this to butt right up to the rail. Of course, got casters on it. Let me give you an idea of how the construction is going to work. This is looking down from the top as if you're looking through the top of the table. And you can see the 4x8 pedestal here, the 4x4 pedestal here. This will be the face frame set into dados and run between these two pedestals, then plywood run between these. And this is a little detail of the construction of the pedestals. I'm actually going to do mitered corners so I don't have to worry about dressing any plywood edges. And then I'll cut the dados in here. This dado here is set way back on this pedestal for a reason. First of all, I didn't need the drawers to be any deeper than they're already going to be. But I thought it'd be nice to actually run shelves across these pedestals back here, they'll probably be about six and a half or seven inches deep. It'd be just right for putting glue and glue up supplies on. I think that'll actually be pretty nice. And then this is the top detail showing the sizes to cut both the half inch MDF and the three quarter inch MDF. And a little construction detail here of how it's gonna all go together with the hardwood edging around. So, I'm ready to get started. When I decided to get the saw stop, the one thing I was sure of was that I was not going to do a review. Everybody has done a review of the saw stop saw. You know, 
my little contractor saw served me well, but I realize now that despite the fact that it was compact and saved a lot of space in my shop, I was either consciously or subconsciously actually finding ways not to use it. And I think it's because it scared me a little bit. It was noisy. It didn't have a riving knife. I did have a kickback incident one time with that saw. So I took to doing things different ways. Longer, heavier boards that needed to be ripped, I ripped on the bandsaw. All of my cross cuts I made at the miter saw station and dados I cut on the router table. Well, I want to get back to using a table saw the way I've always used table saws in the past and that's for a lot more stuff. I want to do this entire project of making this outfeed table or as much as possible on the saw stop. So I'm going to be cutting miters, I'm going to be cross cutting, I'm going to be ripping, and I'm going to be cutting dados on the saw stop saw. And even though I said I wasn't going to do a review, I'm pretty opinionated, so I'll let you know how the saw is working as I go through the process. Really looking forward to this project. I hope you are too. Thank you for watching this video, and I look forward to seeing you in the next one.